My name is Angel, and today I'm here with my teammate, Rafael, to talk to you about how to create Istio filters with any programming language. Before starting, uh, let me introduce uh, the team we are working on. We both are part of Wasan Labs, which is a small team inside of the VMware office of the CTO. We focus on creating and contributing uh, to projects that showcase the possibilities of WebAssembly. We also create uh, different tools and other projects to, to um, increase the adoption of developers for this technology that we are really excited for. Apart from that, we also create 13 experiments. We would we love to do that. And today we want to, to show you one of the experiments that we recently did. One thing that I think every one of us that work with services and infrastructure knows that proxies are everywhere. Proxies are a critical piece of an infrastructure. We can talk about proxies even in single node deployments where we have a reverse proxy that redirects the traffic to our services. We can think of big clusters with more than 100 nodes and a lot of different proxies collaborating together to serve the traffic, redirect things, and provide the actual content that our users want to see. There are a lot of different ones. We have Envoy, Nginx, Traffic. There are different types. So today, we are going to focus on Envoy and specifically about Istio installations that are based on Envoy. If we look how a regular deployment looks these days, we have a lot of different applications that actually share some common resources or the same box, we can say. It could be multiple nodes, but they are part of the same infrastructure. Then we want to expose them outside, so we create gateways and everything so users can access to them. And in some cases, we need more advanced um, connection between the different uh, resources and the different services. And we include proxies across all the different services so they can connect together and they can perform other ad advanced actions. This is not something that it's easy to manage and to deploy. Fortunately, we have projects like Istio that allows you to easily deploy all these different proxies without any hassle, just put them where they should be and connect the services as we need. So now let's talk a little bit more about how we can extend all those small proxies, all those small dots that we have in our infrastructure. When talking about extending a proxy, what we are talking is about adding custom behaviors that it's tailored to some specific use cases. It could be something that everyone implements on services like observability, traceability, and this kind of, of filters, uh, sorry, of custom behaviors. Or it could be something that is more specific to everyone, um, every, infra every infrastructure or every company. For example, you may need to have something that reports traffic to a centralized service for later anal analysis. It could be something that blocks a specific request. There are different behaviors. Everyone needs to implement something specific. And this is why it, it is important. But why is it useful to do this kind of extension at a proxy level and not, our, for example, inside the services? If we look the same picture that we had before, one thing that I didn't say is that we have eight services in this example, but every service is different. It could be a Ruby application, Node.js application, Go service, JavaScript. There are many different services all together in the same infrastructure, talking and providing uh, content to users or to other services. If we have to ask every team behind every different service to implement a 13 custom behavior, it takes time. And it's not only that, but it's not easy to keep that up to date. You need to ask the team to implement one specific, you know, block some specific request on Ruby. You need to provide maybe an SDK that everyone can import so they don't need to do that. But in the end, it's a complex process. But if we just focus on those small dots, proxies are all the same are all, all, and all of them are managed by Istio. So it seems they are really good spot for placing third time behaviors that can be actually reused by any service because 
you do that just before they receive the traffic. And this is why we think this is really, really useful. So now we have the why, but let's think about the how. How we can extend proxies. Different proxies offers you different mechanisms to uh, extend them. So if we talk about uh, specifically about Envoy, for example, it could be that it provides an API, but if we talk about a different service like uh, Nginx, for example, it provides you a different way. When we talk about extending a proxy, we usually refer to two different types of extensions. We have modules, which allows you to actually access the internals of the proxy. So you can go into the, uh, the API, in the internal API of the proxy. You can do much more advanced things like providing new languages into the, into the proxy, doing specifically anything that the proxy can do. However, this is, it provides you more power, but it's more difficult to implement. Then we talk about filters. Filters are much more easy uh, way to extend the proxies because they are just uh, a source code or a process that runs between the requests and the responses. So filters take requests, process them, continues with the response, receive that information, and then goes back to the user. This is more modules are pretty common in every um, proxy. And usually you have different ways to create them. Those are the small ones. So focusing on filters, if we talk about Envoy, the way or the classic way to create those small filters are with the C++ API. If we go into that direction, it requires you 13 things. The first thing is that you need to know C++, which is something that at least I'm not very familiar with. So it's not easy to implement those. Then, those are compiled filters. You need to actually compile the filters, then compile Envoy with that filter, and then distribute a custom version of Envoy. So it means that now your team needs to maintain that Envoy just for one filter that you created. Envoy comes with a lot of default filters. That's true. And all of them are amazing, to be honest. But when you want to create that, this is the kind of path that you should go. Another option is Lua filters, which are also available because you can enable a module that actually allows you to create Lua filters. But that also requires you to know Lua. But today, I want to present you an alternative way to extend Envoy. So imagine that there is a way in which you can take different languages, languages that you even know, and you can create filters that then will be load by Envoy. You don't need to recompile anything. You don't need to do any extra step. It's just get those modules and then run them as filters inside the Envoy. And this is where WebAssembly enters the scene. So web, with WebAssembly, you can compile those filters into a way that can be load by Envoy, and then you can implement those custom behaviors directly in a more let's say, easier way than actually coding them in C++ and then introducing them via compilation. And to talk about that, my teammate, Rafael, is going to show you about WebAssembly and proxy WASM. Thank you, Angel. So first of all, uh, what is WebAssembly? Uh, a bit more into the details and how these two pieces can fit together. So the first thing is that we, if we think about the several programming languages, we write, for example, Rust, C, or SIG. Uh, there are other programming languages, such as Go as well, that can be compiled to WebAssembly. And so instead of compiling our program to x86, for example, or to Arch64, uh, we can compile that to WebAssembly. So the binary that we get is a specific file that is uh, standalone. And so this, this file, can be reused across different environments. And so it's not only that it's a standalone, it's also safe because it runs in a sandbox. And the idea behind WebAssembly is that since it is a, um, an environment in which it, uh, it doesn't have access to the external world because it's, it's running inside a sandbox, it can only get that much. So it, it, there is no system interface such as the libc, for example, when you can access uh, the external world, you can do syscalls, things like that. You cannot do that from WebAssembly. You, you only have the module that is on your, on your what you were compiled with, and you cannot get out, get out of it. Also, the memory is completely isolated from the outer environment. And so we have this binary, so it's running on a sandbox, it's safe, 
and it's also uh, universal, so we can run that anywhere. And we have this single binary, but we need something in order to run that, and that is the virtual machine. So we, we need a WebAssembly virtual machine that will interpret this WebAssembly and will run that on our machine. And so if we think about that, uh, we see that from JavaScript, we have uh, browsers that already implemented JavaScript itself. And uh, then from there, they were uh, extended to also run WebAssembly. And so from there, we went into the servers with Node. And so we have uh, JavaScript and also WebAssembly uh, running over there. But it's even more than that, because there are other runtimes that now are very specialized in only running WebAssembly. They don't run JavaScript. They just run WebAssembly, and they are super optimized to run our code. And so we have this, this file. Uh, that is uh, standalone, and then we run that instead of, of a virtual machine. But how we do? How do we put all the, all the puzzle together? And the answer is that Envoy uh, is able to start a WASM virtual machine, a WebAssembly virtual machine, and so. We see that our requests are coming, they are getting into the virtual machine and they are getting back out. Uh, but what is the answer here? What is the piece that is missing? And the answer is proxy wasm, and this is what we are talking about today. So proxy wasm was presented in February 2020 uh, by a joint effort by uh, Solo IO, Google, and the Istio community. And so proxy wasm is actually multiple things. So it's an ABI in, the, in that it specifies what is the interface that the guests, so the WebAssembly guests, can talk to? What are the functions that they can call? What is the functions that the host can call inside of the, of the WebAssembly um, sandbox? And it's also another thing. So this is ABI. Then we have SDKs for the different languages. So right now, if you want to write a filter, and this would be on the guest side, you, you uh, implement your program using this SDK and then you are able to write your filter. And in this case, there, there are SDKs for Rust, for C++, and also there is another one for Go, uh, provided by the, by the T-Trade uh, Labs team. And also, that is on the guest part. Then the other part is the host implementation of it. So there is a reference implementation as well uh, that is on C++, and so this is the part that Envoy uses in order to run WebAssembly, start the WebAssembly virtual machine, and then run the WebAssembly inside of it. Okay, so you can create your first, your first filter. We are going to see just a very simple example on, on how that can be done. But you see that there are lots of different languages, Rust, C++, C, Assembly Script, Go. Recently, Go, the official compiler, is able to build to WebAssembly directly without the need of any JavaScript. We also had Tiny Go before that, so we were able to compile Go uh, inside, uh, to compile that to WebAssembly. And uh, in this case, what we are going to do is to show some of the work that we have been doing regarding this, but we are going to run it inside Envoy um, because um, it's just for, for the sake of showing how we can extend the, the proxy itself with WebAssembly. And you can see that everything that is beneath is proxy wasm in this case. So if we take, for example, the Rust uh, code, it's very simple. There is, there is more code, of course, uh, here, but the, the, important, the important takeaway is just this, right? So in this case, we have a function that is defined by the SDK and in the end by the, by the ABI. And so it's on HTTP uh, response headers. So as Angel was saying before, this is sitting in the middle. So it, it gets the requests and it is also able to intercept the answer from it and adapt it somehow. And in this case, we are intercepting the response headers of the request and we are able, in this case, to add a new header to it. And so this, this would be kind of a first filter. But we have seen that all the programs that we have been talking about and the other programming languages have been compiled. So what about interpreted languages? And in this case, and this is what our experiment has been about, and it has been explicitly for this talk, uh, we have JavaScript and we have PHP. Um, and also, we have, we have uh, Python could be added as well, but uh, the, the examples that we are going to show today is exactly about JavaScript and PHP. And so this, this module that we have on WebAssembly can be run on any other platform that supports WebAssembly, not only the Envoy proxy. This is kind of uh, a different environment in which where you run the WebAssembly binary uh, because you need to adapt to the ABI of, of proxy WASM. And so let me show you an example of PHP, and then Angel is going to take uh, the JavaScript part. And um, let's see, I need to change to mirror, one second.
Okay, before we get into the demo, so you, you have the, the repository proxy was in spec where you can see like all the specification, what are the things that you can do with uh, with this in your in your in the guest part and also on the host part. Uh, so if you are interested, have a look at that. Um, it's proxy was in spec and the repo, so you can have a look at that. And so in this case, as part of our work, we ported the PHP interpreter uh, to WebAssembly. And so it is able to, you are able to put the interpreter and run that with a uh, WebAssembly uh, runtime such as Wasm time. And so what we did here uh, was that you have Envoy and you are able to provide a PHP script that you can run and then you load the PHP uh, binary here on the local file name uh, configuration part of Envoy. Uh, I already did the start that because it takes a little while to, a little while to start. As I said, this is just an, this is an experiment done for, done for this talk, so it's not optimized at all. Uh, this is something that we would love to do. Uh, so if there is interest, uh, we would love to, to know more. Um, so as you can see here, uh, we have, first of all, an echo uh, on it. So this is the script that is being executed. And it's, if you see on the left-hand side on the bottom, we have the logs that are coming out of it. And so this, this happens and this is able, uh, this can be done because there is a system interface in reality that is able to echo and to basically write to a standard output. And so uh, you can see that. So on every request, I get a new standard output uh, being written. And we also get the header uh, being set uh, by PHP. Uh, so adding a new thing here would be as simple as that. So you just save that. You could call, for example, to the time uh, function, and then I can just run that. Since it, it's, it takes a little while to start, let's look more a bit into the details. So we did the work to port PHP um, to WebAssembly. And so part of the things that are missing, if you try to just run a data on Envoy uh, with the proxy WASM host part is not going to work because there are some imports that are missing from the system interface. And here there are things that we had to implement on the host side of proxy WASM um, in order for this to work and the, 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 the PHP interpreter to be started by WebAssembly. Uh, this is something that we can talk with the community if there is interest in doing something like this. Um, but yeah, we can, we can get the ball rolling there. So this is one of the things that we had to do. And then the other one was on PHP itself, because uh, as you saw, we are reading the PHP code from the Envoy configuration, and this is something that proxy was allows you to do. So you can configure the proxy, the, the proxy configuration, and then you read that, and then you load that. So uh, when we start, and I'm going to go through the C code, but the, here you have the main on the bottom. When we start the, the when we start the module. Um, we basically start the PHP virtual machine, and then on every request here on response headers, we are going to start the, the um, no, we are going to call uh, to the already initialized uh, PHP virtual machine uh, by saying just uh, read this script and interpret it. And so this is basically what this does. And here the minus error option of PHP is basically I'm going to provide you this script uh, via the standard input, and then you just read that. And this is what is what is going on. We just you know, do do this call on every request that we get. Of course, this only works for proxy and response headers. As I said, uh, this is just done for uh, this purpose of this talk. But this could be extended to support the whole proxy wasm specification. And so, if we go back uh, to the to the um, to the change uh, script, we see now uh, that I added the time here x wasm header at, and now we get that. Uh, properly written over there. And this is actually calling to the time function of PHP. Um, so yeah, that's that's it. So now uh, Angel is going to talk about the JavaScript part. Okay, okay. I think now it's okay. Now you can hear me. Okay, so, so yeah, so uh, the same thing that we had to do for, for PHP as, as Raphael showed, it, it's all the steps that we usually need to do when we want to run interpreted languages into the WebAssembly. So first, you need, of course, an interpreter that can run that code, and then we need to build that bridge between the interpreter, between the WebAssembly host, let's say, and then the code that it's running inside the interpreter, because you want to write JavaScript, you want to write PHP, you don't want to deal with the C code that we showed, and you don't want to, uh, to deal with this Rust code that I'm going to show you now. So, as, as we were focusing on, ex on this experiment, in the case of PHP, we were working directly on the C side. For making it work with JavaScript, we took a slightly different approach. Instead of having to do it from scratch in the interpreter directly, 
we took advantage of other projects that are already in the WebAssembly ecosystem to create this, uh, this WASM module that can actually reproduce the proxy WASM uh, API and run JavaScript code. For that, we use the proxy WASM SDK for Rust directly, and then we use the quick WASM, uh, quick JS, sorry, uh, bindings that the Shopify team created uh, for a different project. So QuickJS is a super small JavaScript interpreter. I think it's, as far as I remember, is uh, I, th I think 500 lines of C code or something like that. So it's pretty small. So it suits really well this kind of use cases as they are small modules and they are really fast to, to run. Here we have the initial configuration that we didn't show before. All this is done at the uh, Rust level, just because we want to configure the filter and pass the source code via configuration. Then we create the HTTP context, which basically allows you to connect to the HTTP at the HTTP level, as, as Rafa showed before, to get the headers and that information. And then we start the virtual machine, the QuickJS virtual machine that will run the final code. If we move to the final QuickJS uh, uh, bindings, here at one point is where we connect those words. We have the host calls, which are these ones for the proxy WASM SDK that allows you, for example, to get a value from the headers. And then we move that and configure a new function inside the JavaScript interpreter that can define the header specifically. But this is not something that actually looks like a proxy wasm filter because you have to actually call this method and this is not something that you could do with other proxy uh, SDKs. So let's build an actual API in JavaScript that looks like proxy wasm. So here we have these bindings that actually gets these imports that we define it for this specific experiment. And then we create JavaScript classes that actually maps exactly what proxy wasm expects so you can code the similar, super similar to how other SDKs work. If we now see the Envoy configuration, it's pretty similar to the one that, uh, that Rafael showed because for every WebAssembly module, it's always the same. You define an HTTP filter, you put that it's type WASM, then you provide the file name, in this case, QuickJS filter, and then you provide via configuration the actual JavaScript code. Which, which, as you can see, is just a class that extends the HTTP context that we define, and then we subscribe to the on HTTP response header and provide that information. Here we have an Envoy proxy running with that specific module, and then if we go here, do curl dash dash b. I think it's 80. Okay, we get that header. So we successfully configured and created an Envoy filter using JavaScript and even PHP. So now let's go back to, to the presentation. So let me uh, extend. Um, can you, because I don't know. Okay. Display. Okay, we are back. Okay, so yeah, this is the experiment that we wanted to show you. As, as we said, the, our, our goal was to try and try to demonstrate that this is actually possible. Make, it may make more sense for some use cases, but something that, that we actually got any time we talk about WebAssembly is that people want to run the same languages that they are used to. Because one of the barriers of using WebAssembly is that the best languages that now target WebAssembly are things like Rust, C++, that not all people are used to work with. Actually, I had to learn that one year ago. So I know, I know that process. So one thing that you may think is that now that we have these models, how we can configure all our infrastructure to ensure that all those filters are run properly. And this is where Istio enters the sim. So when I was trying that in Envoy, it was super simple, as I showed you with the, with the configuration. But now, when we enter into the Kubernetes thing, and we have not one proxy, but we have 30, 40, 50 proxies, then maybe creating those filters could be difficult. The good thing is that 
Istio already provides you a way to extend uh, the, the different proxies with uh, WASM filters. You can configure them directly with a YAML configuration, point them to the specific place that the, the, field, the proxies can find the module, which could be an OCI um, regular resource or an HTTP endpoint. You can push your models to your default register that you have in your infrastructure, and then you will be able to pull them and configure that in the, in the different proxies. The good thing is that these proxies work, but they can be composed. You can configure multiple ones, not only one, and you can even match specific selectors. So you can select what are the applications that are going to have a specific filter or a group of filters. And this is how it works. You configure it in the YAML, you drop that configuration, apply it to your Kubernetes cluster, and suddenly all the different proxies that matches the specific uh, select selectors, they are going to get their filter and they can start serving the traffic. This is how it looks like. So we have a custom Kubernetes resource, which is an extension for Istio. Then the kind is was unplugging. We configure the metadata, we set the selectors, we put the URL, the configuration, and that's all. If all the different proxies that matches it will get that information. Just a quote that we used to say, like, void requires a filter to be present in the file system, and it's just a wizard that makes that happen. And before finishing, I would love to talk a bit more about one of the properties that I really love from, from this specific project for proxy wasan and from WebAssembly in general. And it's about portability. So three weeks ago, we went to a different conference in Barcelona, in Spain, which was the Wasan IO. And there we attended a, a, a talk in which the Kong team presented the proxy Wasan, um, yeah, the, the implementation of proxy Wasan in Nginx and in the Kong platform. Since we were already experimenting with this, we quickly contacted them and we started to talk about this. They got excited about having different languages for filtering and it's good to talk to them because they mentioned that this is something that some customers already ask them, like, hey, is there any way we can use other languages, not the one that you are mentioning? So Kong announced a new project called WasanX some months ago that actually does, does it. It adds the proxy Wasan filters in Nginx and for extension in the Kong platform. And the great thing about this is that once we had the, for example, the JavaScript filter with the WebAssembly module, we only had to send that specific model to them. We didn't care about recompiling, we didn't think about architecture, we didn't think about anything. Just the same exact model works in Kong, in Envoy, and in anything that implements the proxy WASAN interface. And this is something that is general for WebAssembly, but for this case, it was really nice to see. And yeah, that's all that we wanted to show to you today, so yeah. Thank you very much for attending this session. We hope you like it. Um, yeah, we recommend you to come to our blog because we have more experiments like this and more projects. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, if you have any questions, yeah. we, ha we have some time, so feel free. Whoop. It's working. Oh, <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I wanted to ask you about the memory uh, footprint. If you footprint, uh, comparing to classic, let's say, C++ yeah. approach. OK, I think now it's ready, the microphone, so yeah. yeah. I mean, is it? OK. Okay. okay, so the question is, uh, could you share some insights uh, about uh, memory footprint? Uh, it's a CPU uh, footprint uh, comparing to approach with, uh, let's say, C++. So we didn't uh, still did the comparison with the C++ native filtering, but we compared the different WASM models from the different languages because it's, it's different, for example, to have the Rust filter, which is kind of comp compiled natively to WebAssembly, than this middle step with the interpreter compile and then the source code. So the memory footprint really depends on the WebAssembly model because WebAssembly needs to put some, all the information inside a linear memory and that will be the actual memory that it's only for that sandbox. But 
it depends on how on, on the size of that model. So for the JavaScript module, it's, I think, a few megabytes, not much more than that. And the CPU consumption is really, really low. For the case of, of PHP, since the interpreter is bigger, it needs to load more code to, for example, encode more um, all the functions provided by the language and everything. It will, the footprint will be much, much bigger. The good thing is that when this happens, the Envoy proxy initializes first the WebAssembly module. So it's, it's not like every request requires you to initialize the module. It's just that you are calling the functions. So once the initialization is completed, as, as Raphael showed before, that it takes some time for PHP, the footprint is already done there. And replying questions is just a matter of sending and replying to that information. We did the test between Rust, JavaScript, and PHP. And the time is mostly the same. So they don't change at all. You're welcome. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Hi. Uh, yeah. That now is it working? Good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have a similar question though. Uh, more, more on like not only on the footprint, but uh, on the the stress test, like on throughput or anything. Like, have you tested uh, how much RAM can you allocate for the for the like uh, the Wasm VM? Like, it's see like if there is any limit to, or if it gets like uh, bottlenecked at at some point. Or if if the if you're using too much CPU, then the the Wasm filters start to get like uh, less uh, throughput, or like d does it does that anything happen at all? Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, it's a very good question. So uh, we oh, sorry. Thank you for the question. That's a very good question. So uh, we haven't done any measures because it, it has been like just the experiment for this talk and showing that it's possible for people to reuse the software or the languages that they already know. Uh, but I think it's interesting and I think it's something that we should do at some point in order to compare the different options that, that are there. But I don't know if you want to add something more. Yeah, the, um, I don't know. If, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, I think, yeah, I think here. So, yeah, just to add that, that it's true that it's something that from the WebAssembly, let's say, ecosystem, is a still work in progress. So, uh, as you mentioned, this is a question that we did not only for proxy WASM, but for running in general WebAssembly workloads, that currently there is no a, there is no way in the runtimes for limiting memory or CPU. It just goes up to the to the um, to the requirement for that specific model. For Envoy, I didn't check the the specific proxy was and C plus plus specifications, so I don't know if they have a specific throttling or anything like that. But yeah, that's something that that if if at any time we put JavaScript or PHP filter, we must do before to understand really how how it affects the performance. Cool. In terms of difference, uh, I don't know, but uh, there is a way also to say like fuel or gas uh, to, to the WebAssembly runtime. So it's also possible that if you have an endless loop or something like that, you are able to either kill that or or, rev or uh, reduce the fuel that it, it's able to, to do in order to keep running. So that will be killed. Cool. Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, uh, working again, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> uh, my, and then the second question uh, is like, have you ever had to to take care like of states inside those uh, wasm filters? As in, like uh, not only on, on state that you that you maintain as a, like a counter for a rate limits, but actually like to download state from a, somewhere else, uh, and something that like a config map just wouldn't be able to work. Yeah. So. Um there is, there is on this on this spec. There is an API to actually perform HTTP requests, outbound HTTP requests, and there is there is a there is a whole bunch of things that you can do uh, in order to get uh, a state from the outside world. Let's say so. This is something that it's also. But as we were saying, since it's a sandbox, you need to specify what kinds of things you are allowed to do within the sandbox. Uh, but there there are kind of functions that allow you to do these kind of things. So you you can make HTTP requests, but because the proxy wasn't uh, specific, it allows you to do so. Yeah. So, yeah. My, uh, my, like, it also has relation to like how often does your VM get restarted or anything like that? Because uh, if you want, if you want to download like a gigabyte of state just to keep it in your in your Wasm VM, and then suddenly you like every every uh, every like few seconds your plugin gets restarted, uh, you you may face uh, problems with like downloading so much stuff. If it gets reloaded every like at just every like config map change or anything like that, then so maybe it gets better. But like every like if suddenly like every time you you receive less requests it, it like shuts down your VM and then spins it back up, it could face problems, right? Yeah, I mean 
totally. If, if it's something that, that constantly, I think that it only loads at the time that you actually get an error inside the VM, so it traps the error and restart the virtual machine. So as long as the proxy is, is, live, is alive, it will keep. Uh, yeah, we need to stop. Yeah. It's finished, so we can continue the conversation. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very Thank much. You everyone.